I'm not answering questions with WAPTEC. I'm not doing anybody's questions on this video. I'm going to be posting it to a random channel along with another one where I ask a very pointed question, but I'm going to put it on a random channel too because it applies everywhere. But anyway, I found a fun quote, so I'm going to repost this. The amount of energy needed to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude bigger than to produce it. Or a simple answer is, it's very easy to make a mess and cause chaos or entropy. It's very hard to create order from discord. In 1970, the word darknet was referring to all networks isolated for security purposes from any government funded, founded, military, academic, or network of any kind on ARPNET. And this evolved into the internet. By 2001, Deep Web was a search indexing term for parts of the World Wide Web whose contents just aren't indexed by standard web search engines normally, or are excluded or simply not reachable in some way, aka invisible or hidden websites because you know, it's an email page, or uh, it's an online banking page. You're not allowed to peruse every part of it. Some parts are excluded and require certain passwords. Um, another example of this, if you're not aware of it, <coughs> would be any pay service or site protected by paywalls, HTTP forms, or chatbots, or bandwidth restrictions, or any pages that were unreliable wouldn't be indexed. And an index is usually a text-only version of the website used by most of search engines by compressing it by using dictionary compression, which is where you make a list of every word on the page, and if they're the most common words, you put them at the top, obviously, and that allows you to search engine index it by word count and word type, and then you make a page that's nothing but numbers, that's uh, hexadecimal numbers, that indicate which word out of the language. And if you use a two-digit or two-byte code, that gives you a vocabulary of 64,000 words. Under most conditions, most pages can be compacted by making not just the letters and numbers reduced, but words themselves down to two bytes no matter what. Hypercompression or whatever you want to call it. And you could even go ahead and have extra space as we do these days and store images and then compress them by doing analysis of the images. But you can't do that on a page that says you're not allowed to look at my pictures and you're not allowed to index it, including by saying don't index me. So this end ups, with a, ends up with a bunch of pages not being able to do this. Also, some pages were at the time, a long time ago, used secure lo socket layer, and most search engines wouldn't load up an SSL page because it assumed it was excluded. That's not the way it is anymore, but for a very long time, most of the internet, as of 2001, was simply invisible to search engines, which made them suck. Now, it's not such a big deal, but at one time, this required that the robot's text standard be used. What that meant was is that if a website didn't specify otherwise, it would get indexed and copied almost. I mean, it could actually copy the text content. That also meant that you had to be able to exclude it if you didn't want that done for privacy reasons or whatever. See also my website that constantly says robots equals no, even though I want it indexed very badly. So I have to manually do it. And now we get to the manual override. The pages would index if you manually requested they be done so. You could submit your page to Google by saying, please index this. Or not. Some of the pages even allowed you to do it manually so it archived them, like archive.org, which is one of the easiest ways to trick all the search engines into copying your page and archiving it. But, most importantly, indexing it. So, the idea of a deep web is just simply stuff that isn't visible simply because it can't be, or because it's hard to do. Then we get to the next layer. This isn't some Marianas web thing. Things that can't be indexed because they're just simply not visible at all. Or older setups that aren't used anymore. This also includes some systems such as FTP and other formats like that, that aren't used very much and aren't indexed anymore. In 2002, the darknet was now referred to as being used as a word for any purposely hidden, not open to the public, viewable portion or type of network that required a specific protocol or encryption to connect to it at all, making the page inaccessible unless you did some special procedure. This could also technically include any kind of communication that required both parties use a specific standard. This could, in a theory, include uh, internet relay chat and all sorts of other things that aren't really considered part of the web normally. 
or any website or any system that uses an architecture that is superimposed and, par and or parallel to the internet that is designed to use the internet as a base backbone but completely be up above it and floating above it, not below it. But you could treat it as a sort of a side-loaded parallel reality of the internet. This also could include, if you want to include it, since it was at the time existent, 3D worlds that weren't indexed at all, that used formatting that didn't make any sense to anybody, that wouldn't get indexed, that contained entire 3D worlds filled with web pages, which is the reason the 3D marketplaces died. See also VRML, Virtual Reality Markup Language, or VRML, the vermin. So now we get on to 2009. Deep web search terminology. This was discussed in connection to illegal activities taking place on the dark web, which is part, which is a part that operates on top of a dark net and can only be accessed through their overlay network software like Tor, I2P, Freenet, and dozens of others after this point. This also kind of included any peer-to-peer -peer programs like BearShare or not just the Onion Router, but you could also be doing Torrent. These were treated as being back alley kind of things, like cryptocurrency is sometimes. But that's not accurate either. And yes, I'm talking about a specific person on the internet that keeps making claims like this. But we won't mention his name. Then we get to 2010. Well, <clears throat> retronyms, like backronyms, are created after the fact because suddenly we have to do so. Analog clock instead of clock. Um, you know, conventional electronics versus hyperelectronics. We make up new words for things because we've standardized and using the old word to mean something new. Clear net versus, you know, the not clear net. Light net versus dark net. These are retronyms for the surface unencrypted readily available collection of, at the time, 2014 by the way, 16 billion static pages in servers, dynamic pages that were able to be crawled because we've upgraded since then, available to be accessed by any search engine and person. That's the definition. If only people can access it, the search engines can't, it's considered dark. If only search engines can see it, but people can't see it, that's also considered dark. It became any website that was restricted in some way. Yes, many websites present a search engine only page you can't view, a sort of like a mobile device page, that makes it to where the search engine sees something that you never do. Why? Because it presents a deliberately dumbed down version of the website that contains content. So sometimes if you tell your web browser to lie and say that it's Google or Bing, you get the page that's actually got all the data. Sort of like telling it to say you're a mobile device or typing an M before Facebook. Somehow, Facebook loads just fine as long as they don't think you're a PC or a Mac or vice versa. So let's go on. Huff, I say. And it's still searchable with standard web search engines, web browsers, and people. 10% of what's available. At any one time, 90% of it isn't because it's not that it's dark. It's that it's not been indexed yet. The pages are created so rapidly that only 10% of them are ever archived because the presumption is pages disappear all the time. People set up Facebook pages all the time and then they disappear. There's no reason to assume that it should archive every single detail. In fact, many search engines and archive sites won't archive anything now unless you ask them to, which I like. Now we get on to this. Cameo, the the... Irish pronunciation for Cameo, and also an Italian location spelled C-A-I-M-E-O, Cameo. Artificial intelligence that can be accessed via the deep web is an urban legend that doesn't exist. You're talking about the Internet's command line, treating it like a giant single computer. There is one, though. Someone's asked me to do Archie, Veronica, FTP, and all the other older standards that still run. There's like 4,000 pages on the net, max, out of the 16 billion, who knows, that actually will work with the other formats that don't really work normally. Like VRML, uh, Virtual Markup Language, it won't run on most browsers, but it'll try and fail. And even when you had a computer that was set up to work with it, the standards war made it to where it was sort of like Mac versus PC or Internet Explorer versus Netscape, if some of you even remember that, where it would just refuse to work because you didn't do the corporate 
you know, rubber stamp of okayness by using a particular program to view it. There were about a half dozen of them. And you know what they all did to each other? Instead of us getting a 3D world to work with that literally looked like the last Tron movie, we got standardized to death to where it's now used only for one thing. Virtual presence during business meetings where people want to remain anonymous. Instead of just using a Snapchat filter and being done with it. But yeah, that's what it's used for. Isn't that pitiful? We had a 3D internet to work with where you would gesture through or walk through to click something. You'd have warp spaces like going to the netherworld in Minecraft. As part of how you browse the net, you played it like a video game and you could fly. And it was beautiful. And large corporations destroyed it. Now we have social networking. I'm sure they won't do any standards changes to that, will they? Maybe they're just a little slower. And yes, to this day, if you go to SIGGRAPH or any other page that, website, excuse me, that encourage VRML, they still don't have a standard that works, and eventually some corporatized people became involved in standardizing it, and then copy protecting it, and then patenting the shit out of it. And they're still there. I've even built up pages and left them behind. Little nuggets for people to find if they have the proper software for Windows 3.1.1 for work groups and Netscape, whatever it was that year. Or a copy of Internet Explorer, I think it's 3. Yeah. Retro. Beautiful. And impossible to view. Interesting, isn't it? But this artificial intelligence command line, it's an urban legend. But there is an equivalent to it. Everything you had to type to traverse the net doesn't have to happen anymore. The Cameo artificial intelligence utility you're talking about is actually a joke about the one your browser uses. All of these functions for the command line are built into your browser. Every web browser uses them. The internet does not run off of graphics. It's all command line. It's all terminal. Terminal is a program that will do this stuff along with a few others. Low base anonymity net websites routinely identify users passively by their IP addresses. But at the time, you had to manually tell it who you were by logging into the site. You do it all the time now. But now it just uses an IP address. Back then, you'd tell it your email address was a login, so it would uniquely identify you, so it could feed you information by your computer constantly and persistently saying, I'm me at such and such, biff at bit.net, whatever. The Marianas shadow web underworld that people talk about are simply pages that require that you load up a couple of software plugins or a new browser type. That's it. They're not some secret Uber system. They're a way of working on top of the internet without the internet knowing you're doing it. And and they're visible as hell. You, you're not really hidden at all. And these other systems, you're using them all the time. The command line has always been there. It always will be. They're sometimes called semaphores in, in your operating system or whatever. But if you've ever seen that diagram for the Marianas Web or ShadowNet or whatever, it was a lie from the beginning. Always will be. But I do thank all of you for watching this video and taking a little moment to go down memory lane and see how far the memory hole goes. Now remember, the amount of energy you have to put into refuting bullshit is much bigger than generating it. That's why it attracts lazy but somewhat clever people who wish to create shitstorms. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that.